So, let us look at uh, uh, these two concepts one more time, independence and uncorrelated random variables. Two random variables are, what is the condition for independence? You have to show that the joint density function is the product of the density functions. This need to be established, right? What do you mean by uncorrelated? All you need to show is rho x y is 0, which is the same as covariance of x comma y is 0, right? Either one of these, which is the same as you have to show that expected value of x y is mu x multiplied by L. So, if you can show any one of this, that will be uncorrelated. Now, we have seen that because the expected value of x y is double integral x y f x y x comma y dx dy. Of course, if x and y are independent, this becomes, if they are independent, then you can see this becomes f x, uh, the joint density function is the product. Consequently, this becomes uh, the product of, uh, uh, right, we can write it uh, pro the product of the two integrals, but each are the mean. So, we get this free. If they are independent, this is automatic. That means independence always implies uncorrelated random variables. I am going to show that the other way is not true. So, all I need to show is you, show you demonstrate one example. <coughs> unless is very easy, unless <coughs> x and y are uh, jointly Gaussian. Uh, so, let me just do this uh, special case before. Because if you recall, when do you say two random variables are jointly Gaussian? If you have of this form. The joint density function is, we had it little earlier, right? So, x minus mu y sigma x sigma y plus y minus mu y the whole squared sigma y squared. Now, the first job is to, in this case, uh, go, to go home and show that for the jointly Gaussian random variables, this quantity is the rho. I mean, this quantity is actually the uh, correlation coefficient. It takes some doing. It's a standard. So, you just need to take this density function, plug it in here, go through all this. You will turn out that the uh, so, let me write a different thing here. So, let me, for the time being, let me write mu here or r here. That is another variable used. r squared, r squared, r squared, r. You, you have to show that uh, in the x and y are jointly Gaussian, their uh, correlation coefficient is r. So, that needs to be done. <coughs> As I said, you need to take this and plug it in here. Maybe take 0 mean, that is the easier. You put mu x and mu y equal to 0, that is not going to affect the correlation. Of course, if once you establish that r as the correlation, look at here, put r equal to 0, what happens? Uh, this term is gone. Uh, here, this is gone. This is gone. This is gone. It becomes simply a product of the density function. So, here you can see that if r is 0, this will become f x of multiplied by x multiplied by f y if r is 0. So, the special case is easy because you just can, once you can identify this r as the correlation coefficient and you put it equal to 0, that means they are uncorrelated, then they are also independent. But let me take any other case. For example, take x is exponential with parameter lambda y is uh, exponential lambda. So, f x, they are independent, but I am going to generate, uh, <coughs> so x y is f x x multiplied by f y y. So, that is 1 over lambda squared e raised to minus 
x over lambda plus y over lambda, right? x positive, y positive, right? So let me define z equal to x plus y, or w is, uh, or u and v is good. u is x plus y, v is x minus y. How many solutions here? Two lines. If you, they will intercept at one point, right? So x1 is, I want to find the joint density function of u and v. Very easy, right? Because uh, you solve the other way. This is u plus v by 2. We can do it mentally. Y1 is? Very good. And the Jacobian. So Jacobian is, uh, we can do it here. Du by dx is 1. Du by dy? 1. Dv by dx? dv by dy? So what's the determinant? Absolute value of the determinant will be 2, right? So the joint density function of u comma v is Remember, 1 over the Jacobian because I used the Jacobian on this, right? I took the derivative with I rather than do it here. If you do it on this, you will get half. dx1 by du will be half. Right? So half, half, half minus half. So 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is half. It will be. fxy, x1 comma y1. So let me do it quickly. So substitute uh, the 1 over the Jacobian. So this becomes 2 lambda squared e raised to minus x1 plus y1. x1 plus y1 is going to be? x1 plus y1 is? x1 plus y1. So what happened to v? So remember. So now let's look at the limits. You have two random variables. X is positive, Y is positive. So U is always positive. How about V? Right. But what's the relation between U and V? You see anything? This is where you will slip. This is not the density function. It's not complete. So U is positive. What about V? V is, could be positive or negative. Is that the complete description? There's a relation between u and v. U and v. You can see it from here. Because look here, these are two positive numbers. You are subtracting them. So this is always going to be smaller than this in absolute value, whether it is possible. This is all. This is true. So from there, let's find out f u u. Integrate out. Uh, V, v goes from where to where? What is the limits on V? That's where you are wrong. Look at here. So this is where you need to practice problems. So in the UV domain, you see, you can do it like this. U, V. This density function is valid where? Anybody? I believe here, is it? Where is it? Where is this region? U greater U is here, V is here. Here? So where is this region? U is positive, so U is here. But this is the region, I believe U is greater than V, right? So if you fix U, what is the variation on V? You can see from the graph. It goes from? So this is u. This is the region where the densi that density function is valid. This is v. So I'm going to integrate out on v. For a fixed value of u, where does v go? Not 0 to, right? Minus u2. So this is minus u to u. This whole thing is given to be what? If I'm right, this is the right. So that's, uh, so this is minus u to u. 
1 over 2 lambda squared e raised to minus u over lambda db. So that's what. Right? Yes? Because this whole thing comes out, the integral is 2 du, 2, 2 cancels, you get u. Let me quickly check whether this is a density function. I believe it is because it is u over lambda, e raised to minus u over lambda, du over lambda. Uh, so 0 to infinity, I think this integrates to 1, isn't it? Yes? Even if, if I say yes or no, both you agree. So you, put, you define this to be a variable v, <coughs> uh, then this will simply, uh, so this is v, this is v, this is uh, dv. So v dv, v e raised to minus v dv is 1. So that's, this is fine. This is a density function. Let's find out v. You have to integrate out u. Where does u go? Anyone? After doing, so you have to integrate out u. Look at the diagram. The joint density function is only valid here. So if you fix v, v is going to be somewhere here or here. So if you fix uh, v, what is the, uh, you have to integrate out u. Look at here, it's written here. If you fix v, u goes from You can't even read this much, and you are going to take the exam in two weeks. So, what is given? V is given. For a given V, what is the what is the condition on U? U is look at here. It is written there. You just need to read it. For a given V, what is the condition on U? It's written here. So where does the integral go? Anyone? See, you see your difficulty? Very simple problem, difficulty. So it is, just, huh? That's also wrong. Who, anyone? What would be the lower limit? It's written here. Look here, it cannot be zero. You can see here, v, is, v could be here or here. V, v is here, u goes from where to where? Isn't it? This is the way you would go, isn't it? For a fixed value of v. If v is here, it would go from here to here. So from where to where? Huh? U to infinity. U is the variable. Yeah, but if u is a variable, why would you leave um, people uh, in that term? You are not paying attention. This is f u u. Yes. This is the second way, f v v. Yes. Yeah. So here, uh, f to find out f u, you integrate out v, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. This is apple. This is orange. This is two different problems, right? That should be theta. Right? I think you. Are, it's getting late for you. Theta, no. U, two variables, u and v. Yes. So to find out u, we integrate out v, right? Yes. It's All right. Hmm? No theta. No theta. Where, where did I write that? This is my, this is my lower case. This is if you want, this is variable v, v, variable v, not theta, right? This is this v variable whatever the second variable is. So let's uh, put the density function, that's 1 over lambda squared, e raised to minus u over lambda, d u, right? Yes. So if you integrate, what do you get? 1 over lambda squared, e raised to minus u over lambda, or minus 1 over lambda. So what's the answer, anyone? Yes? 
The top limit is 0, so the minus goes away, bottom limit, right? And, yes. and the variable is what? V is uh, less than, V goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So first of all, what is the conclusion? If you take the product, what happens? Is it equal to the joint density function? Yes or no? If you take, multiply this with uh, this, you don't get that, get back the original density function, right? Because on this side you have 1 over lambda squared e raised to minus u. So this is not equal because this is whatever, u over lambda squared e raised to minus u over lambda. What is it? So the, they are, uh, u and v are not independent, right? So let's quickly find out the the correlation between any questions here? So the join uh, this could have been an exam problem, for example, something like this. Finding a give I give you the join density function, finding the Question is, uh, are u and v independent? So then you have to go through all this, right? So let's find out the correlation. So we want correlation between u and v. So that's u, v, u, v. Remember, if you're just trying to find out correlation, you don't need to compute the variances, right? You just look at, so let's look at the covariance of u comma v. That is expected value of u v minus expected value of u multiplied by. So either you can do it this way, or you take the remember u and v are functions of x and y, right? So u is what? Anybody? You what is the u given to us as? So look at here. This is same as x plus y multiplied by x minus y minus expected value of multiplied by expected value of x minus y. Okay. Now this is what? This you can simplify it as what? Expected value of? x squared minus y squared. And how about here? This is expected value of so of course if you want you can write this as mu x plus mu y, right? Yes. Multiplied by? Hmm? Yes. So this much is true. Now actually if you if you use your brain, you can solve this problem without the of course at this point you would say I need to go and compute these four quantities. But anybody sees the and simplification right away? Look at the original problem, the two random variables, x and y, where we started with. What is x? x is what? Exponential with parameter lambda. y is? Whatever it is, look at the x and y are identical random variables, right? Whatever is this quantity, do you see that this quantity will be exactly the same, right? You, you can, as he says, you can compute it, but even if you don't know, at this point you know that this quantity is exactly the same as this. How about here? This may be whatever it is. Look at here. These two quantities will be the same, isn't it? Yes. This will be the same because the same mean, they have the same mean. So this quantity is zero. So you don't need to worry about what this is. They are actually, these quantities are the same. So what happens? Covariance is zero. So I constructed two random variables for you, which are uncorrelated, but it takes some doing, but they are not independent. So this is zero, that means x, y, not x, y, u and v are uncorrelated. But not independent. 
Uh, let me just uh, stop this by saying that I don't need exponential there. If I had taken any two identical random variables, this will work, right? They will be always uncorrelated. But the joint density function will be something else. So the a tough job is to go and show that they are not independent. So almost all the, unless we are dealing with the Gaussian. So look here, if, if it is jointly Gaussian, uh, what happens here? Suppose x and y are correlated Gaussian. You take this problem, you take x plus y and x minus y, we just showed what? x plus y and x minus y will be always? Uncorrelated. But in the Gaussian case, we showed if two random variables are um, uh, uncorrelated, they are also independent. So you, only thing I haven't shown is, uh, let me show you next that you, if this is a Gaussian problem, uh, then the u and v will be also jointly Gaussian. And they will be uncorrelated. Consequently, they will be independent. So we have shown an example. Uh, so main thing I wanted to say is indep <coughs> independence always implies uncorrelatedness. But it doesn't go this way. Uncorrelated doesn't mean, does not in imply independence unless you are dealing with the Gaussian random variables.